Our miracle is that when the world will be sleeping, we'll be the only ones awake. Our miracle is going to be the one where the world is lost in ghafla. The whole world is lost in ghafla. And the only ones awake are the young people. And when these same young people, all they can care about is how many likes on their stupid joke did they get. How many LOLs did they receive? When they keep taking eight different selfie angles and then fixing the color correction and learning the photo, color, you know, changing all of that and then posting it, just felt like taking a selfie out of the blue. Uh, <laughs> when you're so lost inside of yourself, when this device is, is basically your soul, when that's what's happened to you, then you're a lost cause. The enemy of Islam doesn't have to come and destroy you. He already did. He already, you're already done. You've already been cooked. You know? You guys, you have to transcend image. You have to get beyond you know, social pressure. You have to get beyond what people think of you on campus if you're wearing a hijab. Instead of you feeling sorry that you're wearing hijab and they look down on you, you should feel sorry for them that Allah did not crown their heads with guidance. That's what you should be thinking. You young men over here, you know, instead of worrying about, man, these guys get to eat what they want, do what they want, drink what they want, you should feel sorry for them that Allah dignified you as a human being and kept you away from living an animal existence, pretending to be human. There is such a thing as learning Islam and forgetting the purpose of Islam. There is such a thing as gaining a lot of knowledge without purpose. There is such a thing. And we have to be careful about learning with what? with purpose. We cannot lose sight of purpose. Everything we do must have purpose. This is one of the most powerful lessons taught in, the, in this surah. Right? So 88% of you technically bring your phones into the bathroom. And that's interesting, subhanAllah. Because, subhanAllah, people like nowadays, we've taken it to the next level. Like Sheikh Saad was saying, we are online 24-7, including not only in our dreams, but in the bathroom. Um, use your phone as a phone, right? So turn off your data or your Wi-Fi and call and text, right? So that's, you're still connected to people, like real people, not people like just online. And other than that, look, um, I'm just going to be real with you. The, like, your life is not going to be that affected if you miss out on social media. And I, and I say this not because like, it's like the right thing to say. I've tried this. Right? I've disconnected for days. And like, there's a part of you that says, man, I wonder what's going on out there. I wonder what's happening, like the latest news and this and that or whatever. And what you find actually is panelah, which is crazy for me. And I'm actually going to speak about this in my, in my session. And that is that the world keeps moving and things will constantly keep happening, whether you are fully informed, fully aware or not. Right? But what is important to you at the end of the day is your psychological and your spiritual health and your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, but I was saying how a lot of people live in this bubble where they will see certain people on social media and think that that's the ideal lifestyle. So then they become sad and depressed with regards to their life and what they have and what they're going through. They fail to actually see what's happening around them and what they are blessed with from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and always trying to chase after something that someone else has without realizing Allah has already given you something to enjoy yourself. So it's important for us to understand our limits. It's important to for us to know how to use social media and the dangers of it as well. Some people are just super naive as to how these you know, platforms work. One And number two, uh, when you see people doing this, I know a lot of other people like roll their eyes. And that is fasting from social media. Um, usually when Ramadan starts, usually there's a couple people who are like, yeah, I'm turning off my social media or whatever. And then in the comments, people are like, why are you showing off, right? Just do it. Like, why do you got to post on social media about fasting from social media? Why are you such a hypocrite and so on and so forth? And I'm like, alhamdulillah, at least this person is like taking a step. Maybe they want some support, right? Maybe they want people to be like, look, right on, like more power to you and we'll help you and so on and so forth. So for me, like, I think that's something that we, that we should encourage. Uh, the month of Ramadan is the month of restraint. It's a month of cutting back. So I, I actually really like that idea. Uh, you know, in the issue, and especially like taking control of our social media. I feel like 
sometimes we just go with the flow, right? Like everyone else is doing it, so we do it. It's become socially acceptable, so let's all just keep doing it. And we don't think about the implications, but really just becoming conscious of what we're posting and how it affects us, how it affects the people in our lives, how it affects ourselves, um, and being conscious about what we post online. A lot. That's right. Um, and I encourage a lot of people to stop doing that. If you do have that, if you're that person, then start filtering them out. Because what happens is, and this is, has been a, a very big problem, especially for some of the sisters when they're looking to get married, right? Guys, mashallah, you know, they go on Facebook, they're like, oh, that's her name, khalas, type it in there. And they get pictures, and like Sheikh Saad was saying, going back many years of us doing things that we probably didn't think we would put online, but we did. Or we put it online thinking, I don't really care if anyone thinks about that. But 10 years later, we forgot that we put that online. And then when people see it, they start judging us, etc. So it's important for us to set those boundaries for ourselves as well. I get loads of people that send me, you know, friend requests. Don't need it. It's a waste of my time. And one thing with regards to social media, I've been thinking about this from the very beginning is, if you value yourself, you will be in control of your phone and your social media platforms. If you don't value yourself, then you're going to let it take control of you. I ask this question as well. How many of you lay down at, in bed at night and you're laying next to your spouse, but you're on your phone and he's on his phone or she's on her phone, whoever you are, right? So it is definitely affecting relationships. People are not spending as much time together anymore. Once upon a time, people would go out for dates with their spouse, no longer going out for dates, no longer going out for walks, not having those you know, family moments where you're sitting in the park together. So yeah, social media is definitely affecting people's lives in, in that way, their marriages, their relationship with their children. Children are seeing it as well. So that's one of the reasons why children pick up social media so quick. Parents who ask that question, well, how can I limit my children from using social media? Well, are you limiting your use of social media in front of your child? If not, well, your parents or your children are seeing you use it, right? And I feel like we really need to make a conscious effort to have those times in our lives where we disconnect. And it's not like, yeah, I need to cut down or like I need to find some time. I mean, set realistic goals for yourself that you can actually follow through with. So if you tell yourself like, yeah, um, I'm going to restrict my online usage to like an hour a day. I would say maybe that's not a realistic goal, depending on who you are, right? But if you tell yourself like, listen, um, an hour before going to bed, like Sheikh Dawood was saying, like, I'm just going to turn off my phone or I'm going to turn on silent. Or I'm going to put it in the other room. And one of the things I would actually recommend is for you to buy an alarm clock, like an old school, real deal alarm clock. Because a lot of times we rely upon our phones for, how many people have used their phones as their alarms? Okay, right? Most everyone. So that means our phone has to be right next to us. And that means there's always that urge to like pick up the phone, to check, and maybe if we're having trouble sleeping, we pick up our phone and start scrolling through Instagram or whatever it may be. Um, but yeah, separate yourself from, from your phone. One of the things that was really helpful for me personally um, was I told myself, and I, like I made this deal with my wife, I said, when we're spending time with my son, my son's two and a bit, um, and I, I travel quite a bit, so like my time with my son is very, very valuable to me. And so we made this deal. We said, look, if we, when we're spending time with our son, like our phones are literally, like actually literally, not the British literally, like literally, literally, they're on the other side of the room or they're in a, uh, in a different room. And we actually bought a, like a landline, a house phone, which, you know, where I live, most people don't have like house phones anymore, right? Because like, everyone has cell phones. No one, no one bothers to buy a house phone. We bought a house phone just for that purpose, just for, look, when we put our cell phones away and we're like an hour into like not touching our cell phones, if there's, emerg if there's an emergency, there's like another phone where somebody can reach us. We never pick up that phone. We've told all our relatives and everybody, like if it's really an emergency, don't call once, call like 20 times. Because like when our landline rings once or twice, we like we don't pick it up, all right? So those are just some ideas. But I think I mean, mashallah, I'm sure all of you are very creative people. It's just a, it's just kind of like being conscious about it and and making a conscious decision to kind of separate yourself, spend time away uh, from your phone. Um, but there definitely is a link between it and ultimate happiness is with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So don't chase after someone else's dream. Live your own dream. Uh, and that's the issue of um, self-esteem and, and self-worth. 
Uh, and we find this generation having a serious problem um, with self-esteem, self-worth, even body image issues. And if you really look into like problems of body image and, and self-esteem, they go back to two broad issues and two broad topics. Number one is comparison and number two is fantasy. Right? So when we start comparing ourselves to others and we look at their lives and what they, what they have and then we look at ourselves and we're like, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm not good enough and so on and so forth. And then fantasy, right? We have this fantasy about what we're supposed to be and how we're supposed to be and all that. So those are two of the aspects that really, really affect our self-esteem and they affect our self-worth. And they, they do, they have uh, psychological uh, implications that we may not realize, right? And I think um, one of the biggest poisons for our self-esteem and self-worth is, um, and, I, and I hate to say this and sound really negative and like sound like an uncle and stuff like that, but is our Instagram feed, right? Because what are we doing on our Instagram feed? We're looking at other people's lives and we're looking at a perfect version of their life, a highly edited version of their lives. I mean, if you look at um, Insta celebrities, right? So those people who are like, y'all know what Insta celebrities are? And yeah, somebody who's like a nobody in real life, but on Instagram, they're like super popular, right? An Insta celebrity, um, they post, they'll post like a photo, two, three photos a day or whatever, and their whole life is based off of posting stuff that looks a certain way. So a lot of these Insta celebrities, when, when they're interviewed, they'll, they'll say like, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll go to like, I'll t we'll take some pictures, but we'll take like 80 or 90 pictures. And then we'll pick one of them and filter that and edit it and so on and so forth. And that's, that's a very challenging way to live your life. But beyond them, everyone who's looking at that or, or some people who are looking at that, they look at that and think that's the norm. Right? And even, I don't know how many of you are into like fitness and health and all that kind of stuff. The fitness accounts on Instagram are crazy. Right? It's like this completely fantasy, unrealistic idea of what a man's body and a woman's body is supposed to look like. Right? And we're told, yeah, this is achievable, this is realistic, you can do this, and so on and so forth. You know, a lot of these, I can tell you from the guy's side, right? at least from the guy's side, a lot of these Instagram models, they're, uh, they're, they're taking steroids, they're putting their, their health in jeopardy. Um, they live a lifestyle which is not a lifestyle that the average person, most people can live. Right? But we're told, like, yeah, you know, just believe in yourself and work hard and, you know, you can achieve this body, which is completely false. Right? It's khiyana, it's deception of people. That, that's what it is. But unfortunately, like, we see that. And even, I know like, some people are like, yeah, I don't believe it. But when, you're, when we're looking at that constantly, right, we, like, at least on a subconscious level, we're going to believe that that's the norm. And then some part of us is going to be affected by that. And I'm just going to preface my answer by saying this may be a little bit controversial, and I apologize for that. Uh, but I don't think there is a set age, right? And I'm not, I'm not saying that you shouldn't set an age. I just don't think there's one particular age where you say, look, as long as you give your child a phone after 14, everything will be fine, right? That's not how it works. There's children who get a phone when they're 10 and they're fine, right? And then there's children who get a phone when they're 17 or 18 and they still go in the completely wrong direction. And the, 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 the main factor here is really terbiya and upbringing, right? Like what we have talked to our kids about, what we have, uh, what we have, what discussions we've had with our kids. And I think, you know, I, you know on a personal level, I think about this a lot because my, my kid's still two, two and a half. And I often think about this issue of like, what am I doing to prepare him for the world that he's stepping into, right? I can, I can take the easy route, which, which I firmly believe is the easy route to just shield and shelter him from everything. Right? And just be like, no, I'm not going to give him a phone. Not gonna, he's never going to watch TV. He's never going to log online. None of that stuff. Right? Just keep him, maybe just lock him in the basement, right? chain him up or whatever. Right? Just keep him totally away until he's 21, get him married in Haras. Right? Like, that's the easy way out. Right? But you know that's ridiculous because that doesn't work. And all of that, like, have, I think we need to have these real discussions with our kids. And sometimes, like I said, it's like the easier route is just to shelter them, to be like, no, I'm just not going to ever give them a phone. I'm not going to ever, you know, I'm just going to keep them away. I'm never going to let them go to college or university or whatever. And that's not an answer. And even, subhanAllah, um, I was speaking to a brother uh, who has a son who's uh, 12 years old. And I asked him, I said, just out of curiosity, because, you know, I have a son as well. I'm like, have you talked to him um, about sex, right? 
And he goes, yeah, I had that discussion. I was like, what was it like? And he goes, it was super uncomfortable and it was super awkward. And I didn't know, and like, and he, and, and, you know, I just, I was really reluctant to do it, but I'm glad I did because once I got my child to open up, I realized that he was already exposed to things that I never would have imagined. And he had so many questions and there's so many issues that, that he, at 12 years old, he was already dealing with. And like he, and then the British brother told him, he said, I'm actually, my only regret is that I waited until he was 12 to have that conversation with him, right? And a lot of times that, that is sometimes very late. Where the phone gets disconnected from the Wi-Fi. And to be honest, I love to sometimes just use a phone for a phone. Like we don't use it as a phone anymore. No one calls anyone. People just message you. And if you don't respond after they see the two blue ticks there, <laughs> they know you read that message. They just like, I know you saw the message. Why are you ignoring me? It's like, you know what? I might be busy. I might be driving. I might have something else more important than your life to live. And that's my life, right? But subhanAllah, people don't take it that way. And that's why I encourage people, disconnect yourself. Disconnect yourself. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be extremely, extremely difficult but I found I needed to disconnect. And so I started with, like I said, step one was just turn it off at night, where I put my, I actually leave my ringer on full blast over the night. But because it's disconnected from the Wi-Fi, nobody calls me, no one messages me, and no one disturbs my sleep.